And I remember seeing you back in the day, graffitism uh, issue three, yeah. with you with a fucking double barrel, I think it was a double barrel pump shotgun or something. So next that, that, shit, that shit was in Germany, man. Yeah, that, that was in Berlin. Two crews, that was painted with one crew, and they went to paint on a wall, right? Yeah. And then the other crew, that was their wall and shit. So they were ready, getting ready to throw down and shit. Guns were being passed back and forth, man, you know? For real, hold in Germany, on, hold on. So that, that wasn't just an opportunity photo with you happened to have like a stunt gun or something? Nah, there was some shit going down. Tequila Keller Official dot com. THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton, and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp, and street culture. THTC, eco fashion redefined since 1999. Instagram UK Frontline. One hundred one point four FM, twenty four hours a day, all genres. Flexfm.co.uk. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Killer Keller podcast. You are on now. Welcome to the Keller Dome. Uh, big shout out to Graffiti Kings inside the place. And uh, yeah, we're on Zoom. We're on a uh, international call, hot wired, all the way over to uh, the other side of the Atlantic with a man that is, you know, his legacy speaks volumes. His name's synonymous all around the world. Um, and uh, yeah, one of the original writers still to this day doing his thing. Terrible tea kid inside the place. How are you, brother? Yo, yo, chilling, brother. I'm chilling, man. How you doing, man? Good. You're looking well, brother. Hey, man, listen. <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> that's, that's right. I take it that is like uh, some like heavy dose of energizing Peter Pan style alcohol beverage. You are <laughs> <laughs> Actually, nah, man. Just, just, just writing with all these young cats, man. All these new cats that are out there, man. Staying up with them. That shit gives me energy, man, and just, like, keeps me going, man. It's an evergreen culture, isn't it? It's something that just keeps oh, on bleeding oh. new skills. New, sh- new shit always coming out, man. New kids always popping up, man, always curious. You know, and, and I, I'm so grateful that they reach out to me because, you know, they're new to the game and they like to know, the like, the roots and stuff, man. You know, the foundation of what they're getting into. And yeah. whenever I get a chance, I roll with them. You know, I lay that for them, man. You know, I, I tell them some of the foundation, some of the ins and outs, some of the do's and don'ts about graffiti and stuff. And, and you know, and they keep it real and they keep it moving, man. Yeah, there's a, it's, an, it's an evergreen art form, isn't it? And I'm sure, Absolutely. I'm sure there's, like, a, a lot of uh, argument that you take away some of, some of what they're bringing to the table and vice versa, right? Always, always, man. You know, it's funny because a lot of writers, man, say, yo, TK, how come you still, you know, you, you're from the old school. Why you keep up with what's going on today? You know, you're still reveling, relevant and stuff. And what it is, is like, you know, I, I, I get new ideas from these kids, man. They're always rocking and dropping new shit, man, you know. And it's a, it's a give and take, man. You know, it's not like they're learning from me, but I'm learning just as much from them and stuff, man. You know, and that's how it is, man. And that's how you, you know, you keep that open mind, bro. You're going to go far, man. For real, for real. There's a jazz, sure. I mean, I've said this on the podcast before, um, but there is a, almost like a jazz uh, uh, level of notoriety where people, they go back into the uh, the vaults of like, you know, and they know the names, they know this, you know, it doesn't matter what age you are. It's like you, you almost, you, you learn your hit, you, 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 you work out the roadmaps and do your history before jumping into the arena, right? Exactly, man. Because you come up, you know, whenever you learn the history of something, you're, you're that much better at it because you know so much about it. You know, you know the foundations and you know where you want to go. Mm-hmm. And really what it is, is you, you're picking up where we left off, man. Yeah. You know, and to do it right, you got to know what we did, man. You got to study it. You got to see it, man, you know? For sure. And that, that'll take you far, man. For sure. You know? That's uh. Let's go back there for a second, shall we? Because obviously, the the the, the beginnings, the, uh, the the framework of graph, it, it's got so many deep levels. You know, it all started from where you're from, my brother, and you were right at the top of the the, the food chain, so to speak. You were one right. of the, you know, the, the chosen few at the time that were just in the the Goldilocks zone of like, you know, this thing called graph. 
Um, I, know, man. I, I was real lucky with that, man. You know, to be at that time man, and experience what I experienced and to see everything that I've seen, man. But, you know, even like before me, there was a couple of guys that were like really founders. You know, the guys that tag, the guys that bring it up, man. You know, those guys, guys like Mike 171, SJK, Taki 183, you know, those cats, they didn't peace, man. But, yo, they bond, man, and they got around and stuff. And, you know, just like cats ask me about stuff, I ask them. You know, it, it's funny. I was notorious for painting in the ghost yard. And always people asking me, like, yo, why did that yard get the name the ghost yard? You know, and it was always called the ghost yard. Uh -huh. And I hooked up with this kid, Mike 171. You know, he's an old school writer. And, I, and he was like, yo, we're the ones that gave the name the ghost yard. And the reason they called it the ghost yard was because back in those days, in the late 60s, early 70s, they used to have, in the middle of the night, they used to have the, 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 the guards and stuff walk around with, with torches, with lanterns. And it looked eerie, like ghosts were running around in there and stuff, man. You know? And, and it's funny, that's why. I would be stoked because that's where they had, like, abandoned trains and whatnot. You know, old trains that crashed. They would put them there because it's a repair station. And I thought that's why they called it. But it was because the guys that used to patrol the yard would walk around with hand lanterns. You know, handheld torches and stuff like that, man. You know, back in those days, For sure. Man. You know, that kind of Jack Nicholson face, yeah, you know? Kind of shit, man. Looking around, man. Silence you know? the Lamb shit as well. So, so that, and if you know anything about that, it's like right on the side of a river. And in the summertime, you get a lot of fog. And if you go in there at night in that fog and those guys are walking around with those lights, yeah, it's kind of creepy, man. <laughs> creepy as shit, so, dude. I mean, if that wasn't know? about to turn you away from Graff, I don't know what was. But I kind of like the folklore that it was a uh, it was a train repair spot as well. So there was loads of, you know, trains of, you know, yeah. <laughs> of, of distant trains, memory. Wreck trains, all kind of trains. So yeah, man, that, that's where trains went to. In fact, when they got rid of all those old New York City trains, that's where they put them. And then from there, they took them out to the ocean and dropped them in the ocean. Man. Oh, they dropped them in the... So that's the true fact as well. They dropped them in the ocean. Yeah, man. Make coral reef and stuff like that. Because that iron is good for coral, man. Of they course. love that stuff, man. Damn, that's crazy. Um, so how many trains do you reckon were in the ghost yard at that time? Like when you think about, you know, not, not, not you that know, I'm uh, adding you to you know, more stress to yourself and guessing how many, no. Yeah, but yeah. on an average, was there a lot? Could you, was it? A there, there was a lot of trains. You, you had, you had on a, like on an average, like at least 10 layups, you know, 10 lines that you could hit. Of trains and, and each one had two sets, two sets of trains, each set containing like about let's say uh, eight trains, eight to ten trains was set. So picked, there was a lot of trains in there, man. And not only that, you had trains, you had one trains, two trains, three, all the number lines would go there to get fixed. Even the IMDs and BMTs would come over there to, to get repaired. So you had all kind of yards. And it was, it was set up where you could I think it had like about 30 rows, man, about 30 rows, but on an average. Between ten and fifteen of those rows were always filled. Always what? This sounds always like a, a twenty-four hour graph party. Oh man, it, it was like crazy, man. The only thing is, during the week, it, like during the day, man, there was a lot of activity there. But at night, at night, like after midnight and stuff, it would slow down and stuff, and you could go there anytime, any day of the week, and you could paint. But after midnight during the weeks, but on Fridays, you know. Friday nights, man, that was the night to go, man. You could go in on a Friday night and come down on a Sunday and kill like 30, 40 cars in there, man. It's just unthinkable. <laughs> it's like, it's hard, yeah, it it's was hard, dope, hard to imagine, bro. I mean, I mean, it must be hard to imagine for you. Let's take it back. All right, let's go. Okay, I'm going to, uh, this could be a, a load of fundamental questions all molded into one that you've probably heard before. But I, I kind of, to, to paint a picture of that time, in fact, maybe even sooner, like the mid 70s, could you please? explain with as much detail and uh you know as you can as what new york was like what was it like back then you know it, when when i started graffiti man back in the early 70s man you know new york new york uh the bronx you know the landlords were burning the buildings down because people couldn't pay rent you know all the all the factories that were in the bronx that people migrated from puerto rico and, and wherever the islands and stuff migrated to work at these factories. You know, all those factories moved out, uh, uh, you know, overseas to China, to, to Central America, where labor was cheaper. So these factories closed down. So all these people that lived in the Bronx, in that South Bronx area, you know, lost their jobs, couldn't afford to pay rent. Mm -hmm. So what happened was people can't pay rents. Landlords can't pay their mortgages on their buildings. So they started burning their buildings down to collect the insurance money. So, you know, that was going on. So 
you know, this, this was like a cause and effect. So while people are losing their jobs, what happens when people lose their jobs? They got nothing to do. They, they become, you know, they, they turn to drugs, to alcohol. So a lot of drugs started popping up and stuff. And even though the Bronx was kind of like a hot spot back in the, the late 60s, early 70s, well, I want to go to the 50s with the heroin and all that stuff, man. Yeah. You know, it, was, it was there, but it got worse at that time. So, you know, on top of that, you know, you, you had a lot of corruption in the city government and stuff like that. There was a lot of, you know, it, it was what it was, man, you know. So that made it possible for that graffiti scene to emerge, man, because mm. there wasn't really no control over anything. Nobody was looking. In fact, they, they allowed the graffiti for such a long time because they were getting federal, federal money <laughs> to clean trains. So that was like, you know, putting pe- money in people's pockets for overtime and all this stuff. But, you know... If they, if they got rid of the graffiti, man, then that money would stop. So it was a lot of corruption going on totally and stuff it. like that. You know, New York City was burning. You know, by the time, by the time, by, by the time I became Tika, now mind you, I was bombing in the streets and stuff and motion tagging and all that. My first name was King 13 and That's then right. 7102. But then after, you know, getting injured and whatnot, you know, um, I became Tika 170 in, in 1977. And by that time, it, the, yo, them trains were right. They were like a big, wet, you know what, getting ready to be, you know what. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah. <laughs> it was like a, a I, I don't want to say it. My wife, my wife is right over here. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so I, got to, I got to chill, man. <laughs> you know? But, uh, <laughs> you I know, mean, that's how it was, man. That's how it was, man. And, and dude, man, I went in there, and, and, and it was it was amazing because, see, wow, wow, all that shit was going on outside, man. I was like my escape and the escape of a lot of other kids, man, that were going into these yards and these tunnels and whatnot and in trains. It got me out of the neighborhood, man. You know, it, it was crazy because um, everything was new, man. Everything was new. The hip hop culture was emerging. You know, um, the underground scene was emerging. Well, the underground, there was always like a beat make underground type of shit going down in, the, in New York City, but uh-huh. there wasn't no real place for like people like me, like Spanish kids, Latin kids, you know, my brothers, man, you know, all these people, man, from the Bronx and stuff, really had nowhere to go. And, and that whole hip hop thing started happening. We started doing our own street jams and everything. Mm-hmm. And it all be, you know, somehow, some way, it all like got tied in together from uh, the clothes we wear to the way we dance to the art we did, you know, and the music we listened to and played, man. Mm-hmm. You know, it became hip hop, man. You know, and mind you, graffiti on its own, it's an element. It, it, you know, it was there already before this whole hip hop. That's right. But because of everything that was going on, the corruption in the city, the lack of places and, and things for, for the youth like me to do at that time, mm-hmm. you know, created this whole situation, man. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's when your back's against the wall and there's, not the, you know, the, what more can you do? You know, the schools aren't being supplied with the right music equipment for furthering education. Oh, there was none of that. Oh, there was none of that, man. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to play a trumpet or a fucking flute in school, bro. Come on, what kind of shit is that, man? Nobody yeah, yeah, yeah. want to play a, a trumpet or a flute. You know, I mean, coming from where I came from, you know, you wanted to bang on drums. You you wanted, you wanted to listen to music. You wanted to, yo, know, DJs and stuff. That was all new in the 70s, man. You know, that wasn't like, you know, DJs came from the disco era and whatnot, man. But, yo, the scratching and all that stuff, that came from the house parties. That came from Cool Herc. That came from Flash. Those guys, they, they, they rocked it, man. You know, they rocked it and and they set it off, man. They set it off and we followed, man. We were like, yeah, because it was one thing to come out of the ghost shot in the middle of the night, walk up that Fordham Road Bridge, man, and and, and come to St. James Park and there'd be people playing there and and having a jam right there in the park. Dude, man, coming out of painting trains and going to a jam, that shit was sweet. Oh, man. man. Oh, it's just a 24 hour yeah. lifestyle. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, of course, like graffiti was there in its adolescence. What it just, it just happened to be the right time with, with hip hop and DJing and the, the, that new wave of, you know, how to loop a beat and whatnot and the, the jams. It just, it was just incubated in this, in this place, as you rightly described, right? Word, man. Word up, brother. It That's was mad. Dope, I was, um, I mean, we'll stay on the music tip for a second. We, like, I, I I could be wrong, but like there was, there was also like a punk influence to New York. I, I just remember like, um, like the CBGBs, man. Yeah, exactly. CBGBs, man. That was the spot, man. That was like the the underground culture, man. You know, um, you know all that stuff that was coming out of the UK, man. All, all the Sex Pistols, all those guys, man. You know, Iggy Pop. I don't know where he came from, but oh, you know, he's those, Detroit. Those guys, Detroit. That's where he came from. Yeah. But I'm saying, man, you know that. 
that was happening, man. That was happening at that same time, man. And it was running concurrently with what we were doing, man. So, you know, it, it influenced us too, man. You know, that whole culture, that whole rebellion and shit, man, that whole thing that was going on, yeah. just like <laughs> merge and mash together, like a big mashup, man, uh-huh. you know? And, and next thing you know, you got clubs like the Mud Club and shit, man, Dance Interior, all these other places, man, all these under garage, all, the, all these places, man, that, that just started playing this music and you would just go, man. You know, it was just one club, Dance Interior. Have you ever heard of it? No, I haven't. No, no, no. It, it, it was like seven levels and each level was different kind of music, man. And the underground shit was always in the basement, man. The hardcore punk rock shit down there, up on top, disco. You had you had pop, you had you had disco hip hop, you had everything going on in each floor, man. You like you could even in one floor with Latin music, salsa, because everybody like, you know, Latinos like to dance, brother. You know, they like that salsa shit, man. Yeah, boy. You know, it was a dope, it was and that's why they called it dance to because every floor you could dance to whatever you like, man. Bro, I mean, these sounds like, you know, cozy, nostalgic, you know, warm, warm the cockles of your heart at times. But of course, there was like a dead seriousness to it. You, before TMB, you were, you were very much like you were well within the gangs of, of, of the Bronx, weren't you? Yeah, I was in the, I was in the Bronx Enchanters. That was the first gang I joined. I was there for, um, I got drafted into that gang. I didn't really want to join gangs, but they, they made me join after they saw me tagging and stuff. Yeah. And then from there, um, I remember to get out of that gang, man, I had to get what they call lashes. They put me up against the wall and hit me with a belt like 21 times and shit, man. And I that got like out a of kind of that prospects gang. thing? Is that what you would, you would get if, uh, to be enrolled sort of thing? Well, you know, you had the Apache line. I was a young kid, so they, there was different levels of torture for for kids, you know? It was a different degree of torture, man. You know, but it was about going through some physical pain, and I wanted to get out of the gang and stuff, man. And I got out of that one. I got into another one called the, Re- the Renegades of Harlem, you know? And the Renegades of Harlem, they were really cool. I was in the Young Renegades, man. I ran with kids like Danko, uh, Smokey, Sly One Away, who was a savage samurai. Um, we used to chill, man, down in, in Spanish Harlem and shit, man, you know? And then from there, man, that's when I ended up getting shot and whatnot. And then I said, you know what? That's it, man. I'm out of gangs, man. I got to get out of these gangs, man. Yeah, mate, uh, mate, I'll be out. <laughs> but like, I, you know, I get the impression that uh, you had to be in a gang to survive. That's That was just... Well, at that point, yeah, you had to. You know, once you get drafted and you get into that stuff, man, you know, it's like you don't know anything else, man. You know, everything is about robbing, stealing, and you know, just, just that whole macho shit, man, you know, that, that's what it was all about, man. Yeah. You know, get yours before they get you and stuff. And you had your family, your brothers, man, you know, yeah, yeah. and for, for, a, for a short time, that's what it was, man. But then, you know, like after I got shot, I saw all the, all the pain and damage that I was causing my family, my real family, my mother, my father, those people, you know, I, I don't know, something inside me changed. And, and, and being that I was like half foot into graffiti and stuff, I was like, that That just made me determined to, to become TK-170 and, and just to paint trains. And, and it's funny because I said, you know what, fuck the, fuck the insides. I mean, I tagged the insides, yeah. but I wanted to dedicate myself to the outside, yeah. you know, and yeah. do burners and stuff like that. Now, I'm going to tell you, it, it took me some time to get good, man, because I was still like a toy, man. And my first pieces were like whack and shit, you know? Yeah. And it was a whole process. But you know what? I paid attention. I ran with guys like Tracy-168. You know, I, I ran, I ran with a lot of popular, those who, who mentored me, man. You know, Knock 167, man. I learned watching his stuff, man. Watching all the stuff. The TDS crew, man. The TMT. Well, TMT came later, man. But, yeah, that's you know, right. You know, watching their stuff. And, and, and it was just like a freaking honor to be taught by this. Because, see, we didn't have magazines. We didn't have videos. We didn't have none of that. I would get on the on the Ford train. I would take it to whatever line I wanted to watch whatever was going on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, totally. I would get on watch and that's how I learned by watching trains go by and what wow. pieces were on what trains and who was doing what mm-hmm. you know and that's how I taught myself and then on top of that with the mentoring of Tracy and Padre you know I was able to put it together eventually and become T-Kid and, and, and do this do what I do today man you know and today I, you know it's funny because um, most of the art I do man it, I, I never I never went into that abstract thing I always do graffiti you know I'll go to galleries and they'll say, well, why can't you do this? And why can't you? I said, yeah, if you want that, get somebody else. This is what I do. Mm -hmm. I do graffiti. That's Mm -hmm. what I represent. I represent graffiti. You're not going to water down what I do to please you. You know, if it's not aesthetic for you, then, hey, listen, somebody else is going to like it. And guess what? People actually like what I do. That's right. I've seen a lot. Although, with that being said, though, you've got the book. You've got countless, like, you know, 
fifty dollar bills, got the pieces. You got, you know, I mean, you know, my my jaw drops, right? And I'm because I'm a fan, man. I remember seeing you back in the day, Graffitism uh, issue three, because yeah. you were a fucking double barrel. I think it was a double barrel pump shotgun or something. So next, that, that, shit, that shit was in Germany, man. Yeah, that that was in Berlin too, man. Graffitism, man. I remember a homeboy from UK came over, man, and and, and uh, interviewed me and stuff, and you know. It, there was kid. We were gonna throw down. Not me, but like two crews. I was painting with one crew, and they went to paint on a wall, right? Yeah. And then the other crew that was their wall and shit. So they were ready, getting ready to throw down and shit. Guns were being passed back and forth, man. You know, for real. Hold in on, Germany, hold on. Man. So that that wasn't just an opportunity photo with you. you happened to have like a stunt gun or something. Nah, there was some shit going down. Oh, and and I, I, I be I don't I don't know what happened, but somehow I became a peacemaker. And I got down with both, and I talked to this dude, and I talked to that. I said, yo, instead of fighting each other, because I've been there, I know what it's like to be in different gangs and shit, you know? And I said, yo, why don't we just get together and rock this fucking wall, man? And let's do some dope shit, man. You know? Not for nothing, man. You got me here. You know, I'm from New York and shit. I've been where you guys is at, you know? I know, listen, y'all could kill each other, but what's that going to prove? Nothing. Mm. Nothing. Why don't we just take it to the walls and let's do our shit on the walls and let's show everybody what we can do. And guess what? They got down. They got with it. We got down. And yo, we rocked the dope wall, man. That and just, one of the that, kids, you just one of the kids came up to me and gave me his gun and shit. And that's where you see the picture of me holding that kid's gun and shit, man. You've just blown my mind, bro. Like, I'm like, dude, I can't believe that really went down. Like, I mean, to, of all people, like as a peacekeeper, you know, for you to have experienced that back in the day in, in mm. New York, it doesn't get any more peak than that does it like where do you think that the attitude of gangs and and graffiti where did that do you think that actually um, merged together what what stage in the development of graph you know it, it's funny because in different places like la and, and the west coast is a different whole experience out there than it was in new york and the east coast man uh. you know in new york man in, in the east coast in new york and i can only speak about the south bronx because that's where i grew up south bronx and upper manhattan you know harlem <laughs> spanish harlem um, I could tell you this much, man. You know, most of the kids that were writing graffiti had already been in gangs or were part of gangs or knew somebody that was in gangs because gangs was really prevalent mm. in society, in, 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 in that society at that time. If you was from the South Bronx, you know, chances were you knew somebody or you was part of a gang and you had to be in the gang or you get your ass kicked or whatever, man, mm. one or the other, you know? Mm. So as kids got older and they started getting into different things, some into music, some into dancing, you know, that whole mentality came with them. Like with me, like I started the Vamp Squad, man, that notorious fucking crew that used to rob everybody. <laughs> that was from when I was a stick-up kid in the gangs and shit. You know, I brought that with me. Uh -huh. And I didn't mean to do it, but it was just who I was at that time. Yeah. You know? And, and that's how this whole thing got mashed together again, man. You know, the gang, the gang life with, 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 with graffiti, and what have you, and that whole that whole mentality of crews and stuff, and even breakdance crews, how the battling and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's really amazing, man. It was really amazing, man. You know, because that's what it was all about. You know, you either got to be the best, man, or, or, or you ain't nothing, man. Yeah. I you mean, know, you, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't accept, you didn't, listen, losing wasn't an option. Yeah. Losing wasn't an option. I love you know, that, that, I love that mentality that hip hop holds. Yeah, losing wasn't an option, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that's what that was all about. And it was originally surviving the gang, surviving the streets, man, surviving drug addiction, surviving gunshots, surviving the, the pandemic of drugs. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, for sure. that, that oh. shit was crazy, man. Human Poverty, human. man. Yeah. And, and I you think what, what's really, uh, uh, what, what became noticeable in the 80s, you know, I, mean, I, was, a, I was a mere child, you understand. But like, to have been... Uh, part of something so organically growing where you are, you must have been completely out. You must have been like, yo, like this, for instance, for, for want of a better example, when Style Wars came out, then people and other and other um, areas like TV got hit, everywhere got hit with this, this whole revolution of street culture. You, you must have been like, yo, there's other towns, other cities across the world that are going through, have gone through or you know, have experienced the same sort of thing, you know, growing up um, from nothing to something and just giving them the applications and the opportunities to do something that anyone could do with a bit of style and, and practice. That must, that, right. you must have seen that and been like, yo, like we're really, really kickstarting something out here from the Bronx. Oh, you know how amazing it was, man? The first time I went to the UK, that was actually my first European trip. 
That's back in what, 1985? I went to do the TDK cassette thing, the D cassette and Vauxhall Crossing. And, um, you know, I didn't know shit, you know? And when I went out there, man, and I saw, like, like I, at first I was isolated. Not until I started painting the mural that then kids started coming by, man. That kid Steam 156 showed up, Solo showed up, mm. you know? Then, 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 then that kid Pride from the Chrome Angels showed up, Go, you boom, know? Boom, 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 yep. You know, I didn't, I didn't know that there was a whole culture. I thought that this, like I was coming with graffiti brand new, but it was already there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Star Wars magazine, uh, the, 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 the Star Wars, the, the, the Subway graffiti art book yeah. had just been there, man. That had just gotten there. So, so people, and then Brim was there before I was, man, like by a year or so, uh-huh. you know. And, and the word was out there. And then once, once I started realizing that this was like a, a freaking worldwide phenomenon, man, that this culture was this hip hop culture, this thing that we did, man, graffiti, breakdancing, all that shit, yeah, yeah. you know, that it, it was worldwide, man. I was like, damn, it's out here too, man. And it blew my mind. Cause you, like when I was, when I was in the midst of this back in the early seventies, mid seventies and stuff, man, I had no idea, man. I thought it was just going to be like everything else. It starts and it ends. Yeah, 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 yeah. This shit to this day hasn't ended, man. It hasn't ended. And it just yeah. morphing and, and, and growing and growing and morphing and changing. And, and it's like got its own life now, man. It, it just developed a life of its own. You know, it's a culture. It's a subculture created by kids, for kids that now is like, for everybody, it's the ultimate form of communication, man. Whether Real. it's art, art, whether it's dancing, whether it's breaking, whether it's battling, whatever it is, man, it's communication, man. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's so successful, man. That's why guys like you got podcasts, man. Mm-hmm. That's why there's so many magazines, man. Because this shit is so powerful, man, so yep. strong that you got to be part of it, man. For real. You know? For real. We are, man. You know, it's about us, man. And that's the beauty the beautiful thing about it, it's not about color, religion, race, creed. It's about none of that. It's about somewhere where we could be ourselves mm-hmm. and enjoy ourselves and be one together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, thousand unity percent, bro. Shit, man, <laughs> the unity that's found in this shit is amazing, bro. It's fucking amazing, man. Yeah. You know, I'm telling you, man, you know, I'm, I'm just one of many, bro. I'm just one of many, man. You know? There's so many others, man, that, that are so fucking deep and profound, man, you yeah. know? But the thing I is, we're all part of this. I always, always, of this. I always like put it, like the beatboxing game, I always put it in context. Like, I, I see myself as part of an organism that is, is ever-changing. You've got to be prepared to pass about and you've got to be able to own your style because no one else can do your style. You've just got to right. work with the organism. That's <laughs> okay. right, man. That's I mean? right. When you went back to when you went just going retracing the conversation, when you went back to New York, do you think it was resonating enough? Like, what was your what was your what was the feedback Tika gave like the Bronx when he came back from London and like was like you know not that I'm looking for any London props, but I'm I'm intrigued as to know whether the the, the vibrations of how international uh, hip hop and graffiti was becoming did it did it resonate in in the Bronx and in New York? Oh, absolutely, man. Because when, when I got to my inner circle, yeah. you know, my boys, Rack 7, 2 Draw, all these kids, Shock, Mike Dust, you know, yeah. Pessa. When I got back and I started kicking it with them and telling them, yo, man, they be out there fucking doing their thing. They be out there listening to what we listen to, man. Yeah. You know, I was on a radio station, man, fucking the, what was his name? Mike Allen Show, Capital One Radio, yeah. whatever the fuck, man. Yo, oh, oh, Jay was there, man. They listening to what we listen to, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and they were like, "Really, man? For real, man?" I, and I was like, "Yeah, man." And then, and then I, 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 in my suitcase, I bring back some bunt lack paint, man. Like you can't find that in the states, man. You know, and that, at that time, bunt lack, which is it. probably German, yeah. You know, but it was in England. It, it was in UK. It was in in, in London, man. That's and it. I racked up a bunch of cans and shit, and I brought them back, and I started painting. And people were like, "Oh shit, check out those colors, man!" You know. <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, yo, that's what they be rocking with out there, man. That shit is better than what we got here, man, you know? So it, it was it was interesting, man. And it, they, it really resonated and it really made, like, open, open people's minds up. All my boys, they started opening up. And, you know, we started looking forward to meeting people from the UK, from mm-hmm. Germany, from France, you know, especially at our favorite club, the Roxy, man, because that's where we used to rock every Friday. And that's where everybody that came over, you know, would come over there, man. You know, I, uh, met Bowie, met Bando, met so many people, man. It was amazing, man. The, I've got a question. I, I don't know how how what your your response to it will be like. But what what how come you weren't in 
um, Star Wars. Because this was... Henry had asked me, check this out, Henry had asked me to narrate that, man. He said, he liked my voice. He said, you got a cool voice, man. You could do this. But <laughs> the, reason, the reason I turned that down, you know, like I told him, I disappeared and I went underground because, see, I, I really believe that, you know, graffiti was our thing and you shouldn't be showing people what we do. I get it. You know, because once you start showing people where yards, it makes everything hot. Yeah, I get you it. You know, and I was really, I, I was really hardcore at that time, man. Because we're talking like 82 when he's, when we started filming, I think it was, yeah, 82, he started filming this stuff, mm-hmm. you know. And I was like, nah, man, you know, I wasn't with the gallery scene. I wasn't, you know, I didn't jump on the bandwagon with all those guys, man. Mm-hmm. You know, I was about being underground. I stayed true to what I was doing, man, which was painting trains and stuff, man, and being mm-hmm. tea kit, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, I thought that that would just dilute what I was doing, you know. I and it. I didn't want to be a part of that. I didn't want to be a part of that, I you know, it. but I had no idea how it was going to, what it would have done for a person. Like it put scene over the top, you for know, if I, you know, if you really think about it, it yeah. took some writers, man, scheming them, man. Like, yo, right. Everybody's like, yeah, man, you know, yeah, but the thing sure. is, you know, they got, they, they did it. They moved forward. I stood, I stood underground and decided to make my own, like people know who I am still because of yeah. that, Be, in spite of the fact that I didn't do it. People know who I am. Was there a, was there a conscious um, uh, branding? Sounds a bit um, bait and a bit uh, crass, but was there an intention of like, right, okay, if they're doing this, I'm going to triple down. I'm going to quadruple down. I'm going dis- to. I, I didn't. I didn't do it. I just stood true to what I do, man, and kept doing what I do. I just didn't stop. Yeah. See, that's the difference. I didn't stop doing what I was doing. Mm. I kept doing it and doing it. I kept painting trains. I kept getting up. I kept going places, man. I kept doing things. Whenever an opportunity would pop up where I could paint graffiti, such as painting TDK, you know, doing that thing, I was doing graffiti. I wasn't doing no, I wasn't selling out. I was getting paid to go over there and do, do a graffiti mural. Yeah. You know, that's what they wanted. And that's what I did, mm. you know. So I jumped on those opportunities where I was allowed to be myself and do what I needed to do and stuff. And I never stopped, man. Yeah. You know, after that UK trip, man, then I I started doing, I went back a couple more times, man. I, I did the battle in Brillington. Yeah. I did, I did a uh, Wolverhampton, that, that Birmingham show, man. I stood with Goldie and Goldie Wolverhampton. Man, yeah. Yeah, man. I was chilling. I was chilling with 3D from Bristol, man. You know, Crazy. uh, man. Goldie's my boy, man. Goldie, Goldie's been on the show loads of times, man. They, I, I love that yeah, guy. Goldie, Goldie's a man, man. I love Goldie. He's such a cool brother, man. He's such a cool guy. You know, we got down, we painted. You know, we bonded, man. We, I mean, you make lifelong friends and stuff. You know, and then after that, it was Germany, you know, going to Berlin and stuff, man. And, and it's just, and it hasn't stopped, man, except for this COVID shit, man. That's, that's <laughs> put us shit. down for a little bit. But guess what? When it's over, I'll be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Lock up, lock up your, lock up your transit system for now. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. but, but, you know, I think there's an argument, you know, just going back to the, the Star Wars uh, uh, mindset that you had. There's an, I mean, you look, there's obviously time to thaw out. We all get old and stuff and we, we kind of have a, a, you know, it's 2020, right? But um, yeah, that hindsight thing. And it, but there's, there's an argument that, you know, that for the same legitimate reasons, people wouldn't want to go on a podcast. You know, it, it, has, it has these uh, suggestions that, you know, too much exposure, it, it hit hot, heats up a, a channel, right? And it could heat up That's any true. one individual, you know? It's true. Well, I'll tell you why I'm here. Shit. Ain't nothing to do outside, man. I can't travel. So the only way I could do is talk to guys like you. This is how I travel right now. You know, it's it's, It's real simple, man. You know, the message still has to be kept, man. You know, the message still has to be out there, man. One way or another, by all means necessary, bro. My my thing is like, I want to document everything so that like the legacy of these people and people like yourself just, they they remain intact in a nice archived place where, you know, not, not, so you can move forward. And like some people, it's been great. You know, it's like draw a line in the sand and this, that's a chapter of their life. And without that, you you know what I mean? Let me tell you something. In hindsight, man, in hindsight, man, I realized how important it was for Henry to do that book, him and Martha Cooper to do that book, Subway Graffiti Art. I also realized how important it was for, for, for Henry to do that movie, Star Wars, because see a document, like you just said, it documented it, put it in history. And not only that, I seen how by them documenting it, you know, documenting it, how it became a worldwide phenomenon. You know, it's because, listen, man, not that graffiti wasn't anywhere or whatever, man, but this movement, 
that that South Bronx movement, man. Because yo, dude, that's where it started, kid. I don't care what anybody oh, says. Really? Started in South Bronx, kid. That shit started in the Bronx. You know, okay. because of fucking that movie, because of that book, that should reach the fucking world, man. You know, change the whole game. So, you're gonna you're gonna bitch at me because I did a podcast or whatever. Fuck no, man, dude, man. This is this is this is for perpetuity, man. This is gonna be there forever. That book that I wrote is gonna be there forever to let you guys know that we existed, that we did this at that time, that we were part of this, and that's what this is all about, man. That's what it's you know, all about. That's how I see it in hindsight now. You know, back then I was very self centered. I was very close minded. You know, this was my world. I didn't want nobody coming into my world. I didn't know how to share. Mm. That's really what it came down to. I didn't know how to share. That's why I didn't want to be part of that. But today I come to realize how important it is to give you what I got, man. Yeah, for sure. Because see, if I give you what I got, you're going to take it and you're going to take it even further, man. No, and that's what it's all about, real, man. You're, you're a gentleman because, you know, when I hit you up, it was almost like within the space of half an hour we had this con- connected, you know. So, you know, you're, you're gracious with it. You're, you're an OG and I really appreciate it. Um, technology, I think, moves uh, things along, doesn't it? And um, Absolutely. obviously podcasts is, is one of the leading mediums that people are checking and watching and listening to stuff. The Instagram has like played a huge role, isn't it? I mean, there's, there's so much stuff that I guess back in the day, even up to actually arguably even up to like the last three weeks, there's things that are popping off that we don't even know was even coming at the start of the year. But like Instagram has this thing, doesn't it? And it's, 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 it's moved, it's moved the culture on a hell of a lot, hasn't it? Yes, it has, man. It has, man. You know, um, Instagram has become a, a vehicle which we still, you know, continue to broadcast what we're doing. Yeah. You know, all, all of the social media stuff, man. It's a shame that, you know, a, a lot of the negative shit comes with it. Mm. But at the same time, a lot of the positive and people got to pick and choose what they want to hear or what they want to do or what they want to think, you know. Yeah. And if it wasn't for this kind of stuff in, in, in a situation like what we're going through right now, man, the whole world would be shut down. There would be no way of us communicating. Here we are still sharing ideas, still sharing experiences, man. You know, I'm here with you. I'm telling you, I'm sharing my experiences with you so you can broadcast them and let people know, hey, this is what happened. This is part of this culture that we love. Man. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I'm, I'm happy, man, you know, with technology, man, Zoom, fucking IG, you know, whatever, tick, tock, tock, tick. <laughs> yeah, I'm an old school guy, man. You know, I'm not, listen, I'm very limited to what I do because I can only spread myself for so far and shit, man, you know. But my kids, man, my daughter should be on all that shit, man. It should be keeping me hip and in the loop. Dude. So, well, what Dude. you got to do, man? <laughs> And I'd be like, all right. Yeah, yeah. You know? You're so all lucky right. to have that conduit, man. The, the, the daughters, you the know, kids. You know, it, it's funny because I remember growing up, my father, man, my mother were like, shut up, do as I say, not as I do. Now, man, kids, they got free reign to let me know what's up. I tried to tell my family what was up. My parents, they'd be, man, fuck you, kid, shut up. Yeah, dude. Like, they're spearheading you know? some next movements that you just, especially as artists and creatives, you just got to stay on top of. It's like, you know, just have a quick browser what app they're using and do, <laughs> just ask yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. They're pretty, you know... You know, as a parent, you know, you, you can only do but so much. You, 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 you set the example, you know, you, you do what you're supposed to do. And if you're consistent and, and always doing what you're supposed to be doing, they realize that eventually. They may bitch and moan about it, but they realize it. Just like I bitched and moaned to my parents and shit. My kids do the same with me, man. You know, but now now they're grown. Like, my daughter just turned 18. She just graduated from the high school of art and design. She's a little artist, man. She's been she's been painting my wall since she was a toddler, man. What? You know? So they paint, she they, they graph? Yeah, she does graph. She does, she's into that anime shit. That she really likes. Definitely. But she be with me, man. You know, I take a painting with me and stuff. She be spray painting. She be getting down, man. You know, she's dope, man. In fact, right now, me and her are working on a, on a canvas together. I did my stuff, now she's putting in her stuff. And I'll be posting it when it's done. Don't worry. That shit's incredible. You know, this is tea, man. You know? <laughs> tea like, girl. Yeah, yeah, dude. That's like full sight. I mean, look, what a way, eh? Like, to have to have that, you must... What would you say if they, if, if, if they were like, yeah, we're going to go and paint some trains? What would be your first instinctive reaction? I'll be like, don't get caught. And if you get caught, keep your fucking mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rule number one. <laughs> yeah, rule number one. Listen, you're going to go out there. Let me tell you something, man. You know, shit comes with consequences, man. Don't come here with no bullshit. That, that's on you. That's your shit. You know, if you get caught, just keep your mouth shut. That's it, man. For you real? know, just For your real? name and that's it. And your address and that's it. Where you live. 
You know, you don't know nothing. Wait till I get there with the lawyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Don't say nothing. Wait till I get there with the lawyer. You know, that that's, listen, man, that's what my father told me. Shut up. Don't do nothing until I get there with a the lawyer. And I got in trouble a lot. Uh, dude, I do. What was the most, what was the most highest of like uh, action that you, 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 you got involved with where you thought, oh my God, there's no, no getting out of this one? Hmm. You know, man, I'm going to tell you something, man. There was a time, man, I got I got surrounded by this gang called the, Gold, the Ball Busters, right? And uh, they were looking for me, man. They wanted to fuck me up and shit, man. Mm. And I was with Ken, Ken from the task crew, Ken Double N, right. Boozer, my old partner, right? We was, in the, we was hitting the 145th tunnel, man, between 137 and 145th and Broadway, and that's their turf, the Ball Buster turf, right? right. And, and back when I had the van squad, my man Shock had so much, started so much beef with these guys that they wanted to kill all of us, right? Right. So, yo, we were down there one night, man, on a Friday night. And I thought, you know, I was supposed to hook up with John Warren, right? right. And I thought, I thought he didn't, he never showed up. And I thought he set me up, man. I really thought he set me up. But mm-hmm. it was, you know, I, 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 it, was, it just happened, man. Yo, they rolled down like about fucking 30 of them, man. It was just me, Ken, and Booza and, and Rack 7, right? Yeah. Rack, Rack got away. Fucking, it was me and Booza. Yo, we got out the one tunnel and we got surrounded upstairs, man, by 140th Street, man. What? So they they, 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 they they snatched Ken's paint. They surrounded me, man. And I had a messenger bag, right? I had a messenger bag and I had my paint in there. I had like about 15, 20 cans in there, right? Yeah. And I was like, I hear I hear some guy, man, in Spanish goes, yo, that's T-Kid. That's a T-Kid, puñelo, puñelo. That's T-Kid. Stab him, stab him. Huh? And I was like, oh, shit, I'm dead, bro. So my whole shit, man, you know, it was, all right, T, you're going to throw down till they kill you, bro. But I don't know, man. I just started swinging that bag around and around. Like, they try to get, they try to grab my bag. And I said, hell no, man. And they, they go, ooh. And right? They made that circle and shit. Yeah. I started swinging that bag. Yo, man, that bag opened up. And that, them cans came flying out like bullets, bro. And it opened the <laughs> path for me, bro. Yo, I took off, bro. And I got away, man. Yo, they couldn't catch me, bro. You couldn't catch me. When I was young, I could run like a mother. You couldn't catch me. I was like a gazelle, bro. Yo, they couldn't catch me, man. Yo, I, I, I was surrounded. I was almost dead, bro. I was like, yo. Yeah. And I was like, fuck it. You know, I, I wasn't going to go down without a fight. So I, that's why I started swinging that bag around because that shit was heavy, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, that shit went and it opened up, man, and the fucking cans came flying out. All motherfuckers got out the way, bro. Yeah. Dude, boom. I was gone, kid. I was gone. Well, that sounds like something out of one of your favorite 80s movies. You know, the great escape plan that doesn't I mean, ever... Listen, ever... <laughs> listen, I, you know, that's just one of many. That's just one of many, man. One of many, bro. You know, oh, by wow. the grace of, of some power greater than myself, I'm still here, bro. Yeah, for you sure. You know, there, there's some force out there that's been looking out for me, man, that, that's just got, you know, that just got me, bro. Yeah. You know, and, and that's... Not for nothing, man. It's real important to have faith. Faith in what? Whatever it is that you believe in, man, just believe. Believe something, bro. Mm. You know? Mm. Because that gives you the strength. Like, to me, my, my, my shit, man, what I believe in, it just gives me strength to keep doing what I keep doing. That's it. Yeah, for sure. You know? For sure. That's all it's all about, man. You know? All right, last question. And it's a more of a direct yeah. question than the rest of this lot. Um, T, kid, like, the, the letters, they're very, they're, they're, they're very liney, aren't they? I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. What you've managed to do over a period of time is it's it's really own each individual letter. And I, I was in uh, Copenhagen, and uh, I saw that. You know, I saw that wall as well. And I just, <laughs> well, I I mean, for starters, it's been a long time since I was face to face with one of your pieces, right? And right. I just looked at it, and I was like, "Yo, like he's, that was me and Sweat and this other kid, man. I forgot his same. name, man." Say, right, right. Say, dope dude, man. Dope shit, man. They were dope. They were, but the styles, man, like, I, I mean, obviously... It was different. Different, but production-wise, it was across... It felt like all in one. And uh, I just, you know, I just kind of took a, took stock for a minute and thought to myself, damn, like, those aren't the, the easiest of letters in the world. They're I, not. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? They're not, man. They're, they're real hard. They're real hard to, 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 to make flow, man, because they're straight. Yeah. You know, yeah. then you got the D at the end, man. You know that that's listen, man. If, if I if if I would have in hindsight, I would have picked another name that wasn't so you know with straight letters T K I D. Yeah. You know, I would have picked some shit like S E. You know, with yeah. another D. You know, shit like that that curves and but nah, man, dude. Listen, man. You know, uh, 
Tracy told me, man, he taught me a long time ago. He says, hey, TK, man, doesn't matter, man, what, what it looks like or what people think. All that matters is what you do with it and how you feel about it. And, and you make it your own. You've made it and your I own, bro. Like own, no one else, yeah, I, no one else rocks them letters <laughs> individually like that. Let alone all together. You know? Yo, listen, man. I, I've listen. I, I, the shit that I've done, man. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people have learned a lot of style off of me. You mm -hmm. know, and and that's great, man. That's a great thing because you know they can say whatever they want, but at the end of the day, I, I'm 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 humble to know that people are actually. You know, looked at my shit, man, and say, "Yo, that shit is dope. Let me see what I can do with it." Man. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's cool, man. Today, I don't care if you bite my shit or whatever. I'm not in that old school mentality no more. Today is more like, you know what? I'm the foundation, man. It's the you foundation, know? bro. What we're gonna do with it? If you're gonna do the shit, man. Do it right. You know, that, you that's go. what I say. I'm talking to the foundation, ladies and gentlemen, the awesome T Kid in the place. Thank you so much for joining us, my brother. Honestly, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, man. Thank you, bro. It was my pleasure, man. And Listen, sound alive. I've got a few more questions yeah. for you, brother. But uh, in the meantime, Killer Keller podcast striking again with a vengeance. Don't forget to share, spread the love, tell a friend to tell a friend. Do not sleep. I repeat, do not sleep on this repeat. We are like, you know, it was out of fashion. Stay lucky, people. Peace. Peace. Peace.